Now, how does a hydroelectric power plant operate? Okay. So, uh, the basic idea here is a dam is constructed to store water in a reservoir by partially blocking the flow of the river. The reservoir, basically you have a river which is flowing from an uphill region to a downhill region with a significant uh, velocity and you create a dam to block the flow of river and create an artificial river, artificial reservoir. The reservoir has a gate and penstock, we will discuss this, with a downward slope, sloping channel through which the water flows towards the turbine. So the reservoir has a channel which can be controlled, the channel opening can be controlled by a gate system and through this channel the water goes into a uh, uh, turbine, basically a hydro turbine and the kinetic energy of the water drives the turbine blades and its shaft and the rotating shaft gen then generates electricity. So here basically what we have is the potential energy that is present in the water head is converted into kinetic energy of the moving water which then is rotating the turbine shaft and generating electrical power. Okay. So if H is the vertical height from which the water flows out of the reservoir through the gate or penstock system that we will show uh, to the level of the turbine. So the top of the reservoir to where the turbine is situated. This level is the height H. So this is the net potential energy that is present in the water which is given by the flow rate of water into the gravitational acceleration 9.81 into this height h. This is the potential energy present in the water column. And what is the mass flow rate of water? The mass flow rate of water is the density of water around 1000 kg per meter cube into the volume flow rate of water in terms of meter cube per second or liters per second into the uh, uh, acceleration due to gravity into the head height. So this is the net amount of power that is available, the maximum power availability that turbine can convert into electricity. Okay. So uh, density of water 1000, V dot is the volumetric flow rate meter cube per second, H is the vertical height. Okay. And if U is the velocity of water that is flowing into your turbine, then the volume flow rate V dot is the velocity of water into the cross sectional area of the channel. Velocity of water is meter per second, channel cross section is meter square, total we have meter cube per second which is the volume flow rate V dot. Okay. So here uh, most of you will have a little bit of understanding of fluid mechanics, uh, we don't need a lot here. Basically the liquid water flowing along a streamline from the reservoir through the penstock to the turbine, the relation between the pressure, the height the velocity between any two points along the streamline is given by the upstream pressure plus half rho u1 square, the density of water into the velocity at the upstream point whole square. This is the kinetic energy fraction, this is the pressure fraction and rho g h1, the height, the potential energy due to height rho g h1 given by the downstream pressure, the velocity half rho into the velocity square in the downstream point 2 into rho g h2 which is the potential energy at the station 2. Okay. So for a very simple case, we can assume that the velocity at the reservoir level, so where the reservoir is far away from the uh, channel, the velocity is 0 and the pressure is more or less constant between pressure point 0.1 and point 0.2. So these two cancel out, the initial u1 far away from the channel is 0, so this also cancels out. So then the final velocity at the turbine location is basically the difference in height between these two points which is which we call H capital H. So capital H is basically H1 minus H2. Okay, The difference in height between the top of the reservoir and the location of the turbine blades. This half rho, sorry rho g H1 minus H2 is equals to half rho u square which when you simplify becomes u equals to twice g h root over twice g h. This is the velocity of water at the turbine location equal to root over 2 into acceleration due to gravity into the head height between the reservoir and the turbine. And we can see this idea here in this schematic diagram. So here is your dam, this is the reservoir, this is your turbine. So you, you see this, this is, this is called the penstock or the channel 
through which water from the reservoir is diverted into your turbine, the uh, uh, hydro power turbine. This is the gate that can be uh, closed up and down and hence you are able to control the flow of water easily by uh, partially opening or partially closing the gate. Then water flows from this channel into your water turbine and it, uh, the uh, kinetic energy of the water drives the blades to rotate and the sh uh, turbine shaft is connected to the generator shaft which generates the electricity. Okay, so this is your hydro power plant, hydel power plant as we call it. And then the water goes down, downstream into the river. Okay, so this is the upstream section of the river where there is a reservoir and this is the downstream section of the river. Okay. So usually if you look at a dam, uh, you may have seen dams, you may not. Uh, you will see this kind of a slope here. So let me just show you in the initial figure. So this is the dam. You can see uh, this is the channel and the water is coming out from the bottom of the channel as you can see here. Okay. And the turbine is located somewhere over here. Sometimes uh, you have uh, overflow gates when the reservoir height is too large. Some of the water gets uh, 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 diverted through overflow gates. That is what is being shown here. So that there is no uh, flooding out of the turbine generation. But in general, there is a channel and the water kind of flows downstream from, from the top of the reservoir head to the bottom of the reservoir head. So this is the height from the turbine head to the top of the water table. Okay. And this is a detailed view of the turbine. So you can see water is flowing into this system. So water flows into this system and the kinetic energy and the pressure of the water gets converted into rotational kinetic energy of the turbine blades, which turns the turbine shaft, which is connected to the generator shaft and the rotation of the generator shaft uh, in, in, in the stator rotor system of a generator creates the alternating current that is gets transmitted uh, through the power lines into the grid. Okay, So that is the basic system of how this works. So uh, let us look at a very simple example problem in this case. Suppose you have a, a water in a moderately sized river which flows at a rate of 100 meter cube per second. So the volume flow rate V dot is given and the flow happens through a perfectly smooth pipe so the pin stock is perfectly smooth. So there is no frictional losses we are assuming. And it's falling 50 meter into the turbine. So the height from the top of the channel to the turbine uh, area is 50 meters. So the height H is 50 meters. The volume flow rate is 100 meters per second, 100 meter cube per second. So what is the net available power? Okay, that is the first question. The second question is, if in practice, 10% of the power is lost by friction, transformation and distribution. So there is an efficiency factor here. There are losses in the conversion through frictional losses, losses during the transformation in the generator and through distribution in the grid. Then how many houses having an average electricity consumption of 0.5 kilowatts? So 0.5 kilowatts is around 12 kilowatt hours per day. Why, how does this work? Remember, one day is 24 hours. So 24 into 0.5 is 12 kilowatt hours. So this is the total energy consumption per day. And we are being asked that given a 10% loss due to friction and other effects, given the total available power, how many houses will this, if a, if a hydro power dam is being built, which runs uh, with a river steadily flowing at 100 meter cube per second and falling over a 50 meter height in a pen stock, what is the electricity being generated? And this will able to supply electricity to how many homes if, the if each of these homes uh, consume power an average of 0.5 kilowatts. Okay, so that's the problem. So here, the power that, that can be generated is, you can see here from the, uh, uh, from the equation here, the net power W dot that can be generated is the density of water into the volume flow rate into G into the height H. So this is what we are doing. The density of water is 1000 kgs per meter cube. Volume flow rate is 100 meter cube per second. G is 9.81 meter per second square. 
height h is 50 meters together this comes as 49 megawatts so the net available power is 49 megawatts of which 10 percent is lost so 49 megawatts is 49,000 kilowatts 10 percent is lost is 4,900 kilowatts is being lost okay so this is the net available power that can be transmitted to the households and each household consumes 0.5 kilowatts so if you do the math it comes at around 88,000 okay which is approximately a large town with a population of uh, 2,20,000 so this single power plant can with a 49 megawatt uh, uh, generation capacity without friction assuming a 10 percent frictional loss can power a large town so which ki kind of shows us the potential of a hydroelectric dam that once it's built even a reasonably moderately sized dam can uh, power an entire small town so the next section that we will discuss now is uh, is what are called the impulse turbines okay so the idea of an impulse turbine is that uh, so this section basically is discussing several types of turbines that exist in the world today okay there are several designs some designs are more useful in some cases other designs are more useful in other cases and we will discuss these cases individual okay so we will start a little bit on this point and then we will continue the discussion in the next class as well okay so the impulse turbines operate by accelerating a jet of water which is hitting the turbine blades all right so let me just show the figure so that it becomes easier for you to understand so you can see in this figure here how this wheels of the uh, wheels of this turbine blades look it's kind of a dual bucket shaped or a leaf shaped kind of a structure so you have two cups which is joined in the middle okay and you have multiple of these cups happening okay and you have multiple nozzles and these nozzles are directed towards these cups so the water from the channel gets diverted into these nozzles which inject the water at very high velocity because the nozzle cross section area as you can see are very small so the water velocity increases to keep the volume flow rate the same water is incompressible right the volume flow rate is velocity into area as the area falls the velocity rises so these nozzles inject the jets at very high velocities and it impinges on these buckets and the kinetic energy of that jet gets transferred to these buckets okay so the basic idea then is you have the total height h say from the top of the reservoir and this is your channel which is being simplified here and this is the height h and it enters the nozzle the nozzle that we discussed and this entire potential energy of water is converted into kinetic energy of the moving jet which is hitting the cups of your impulse turbine wheels all right now here there is a dis, uh, point about available heat basically during this process a part of the total energy is lost due to the frictional losses in the nozzles in the walls of the channel etc so you can think of this as a frictional head loss so the total available head my total head minus the frictional head loss is the available head okay so that is what this h a or the available head means regardless so these impulse turbines operate by first accelerating the flow of water through a set of nozzles that generate high velocity water jets that are incident on bucket like bare blades of the impulse turbine rotor these bucket like blades are designed for maximal transfer of momentum from the water jets to the rotational kinetic energy of the rotor wheel which we will discuss in more detail probably in the next class okay and one of the most common types of impulse turbines is the pelton wheel or the pelton turbine which was uh, uh, which is one of the earliest kind of what uh, hydral turbine designs and uh, this is one of the most commonly used types of impulse turbines even today and these 
impulse turbines are suitable for locations where head height is greater than 10 meters so what it means is that the height of the reservoir and the turbine blades that height difference has to be greater than 10 meter and the volume of water available should be low okay so we will discuss why that is in detail in the next class when we look at some of the uh, technical derivations of what is going to happen but very simply if you can see this structure each wheel cannot handle a lot of water because the water has to be accelerated through these nozzles into individuated jets and you can only put say four five six nozzles around your wheel okay otherwise the jets will start interacting with each other and when you will have even more frictional losses so the if the volume flood is too large these nozzles cannot simply handle such high volumes of water and the nozzles will start choking and the volume cannot move through these nozzles fast enough okay so what what we then what then happens is you cannot the nozzles kind of limit the total volume flow rate through each individual impulse wheels so if the volume flow rate of, of the river is too large then you will need a lot of these impulse wheels to handle that volume which increases the capital cost that is why this system is only economical when the water volumes are relatively low like small scale mountainous rivers etc okay so these are good for small hydropowers in hilly regions where large elevation changes occur naturally okay. so this is a modern impulse turbine example from general electric which is a pel this is a pelton turbine this is your impulse wheels you, you can see here this is another impulse wheel you can see here these are the nozzles that are uh, that that are moving the water here so the water is flowing going into these nozzles and it is driving the wheels and is going back out through the uh, downstream and these impulse turbines as they move they move the shaft which is uh, the turbine shaft which is connected to the generator shaft here so this is the generator region here two impulse wheels on either side which are together driving the impulse turbine okay so this is just an example of how a modern impulse turbine looks like okay so we will so next class we will start our discussion on the technical aspects of the impulse wheel and we will look detail on what's the best design of an impulse wheel to get the best power rating out of it okay so uh, stay tuned and we will di discuss more on this pelton turbine principle in the next class thank you